Hello everyone, welcome back to Generative Geek. In today's Code Along, we are diving into the world of large language models or LLMs and how they handle text input. In the past videos, we have seen how the entire process of loading, chunking and ingesting into a vector database generally works. But most of that chunking that we did till now was based on character lengths. The challenge is almost all of the models limit input basis, the token lens, right? So you have situations where your chunks are much smaller than what a token call could have actually accommodated. So let's just say if your model allows 4,000 input tokens, why do you only want to send chunks of 2,000 tokens to the model when it can actually allow 4,000 tokens, right? Uh, 2,000 characters. 4,000 tokens could mean 8,000 characters, who knows? So today's video is largely about how do you build a chunking method which limits, which chunks bases the token length and not the character length, right? I'm going to use standard libraries, recursive character text splitter and tick token to show you how it all works in less than 10 lines of code. Okay, let's get started. I hope you will learn something new today. So here I have my collab notebook and I have installed two libraries, right? Now these are the dependency libraries that we'll need. We have Langchain and we have tick token. So just say pip install langchain, pip install tick token. And then there's this page I want to show you, right? This is the cookbook uh, page from OpenAI. And if you look at it, it basically talks a lot about tick token as a library. And this library is anyways developed also by OpenAI. But this is a very good page, which basically tells you what is the name of the encoding, which OpenAI model support, what type of encoding, and then how can you use tick, tick, tick token to do the encodings, right? Um, wonderful page what gives you a lot of information and this is the place where they say hey you know what you first take uh, an encoding you either give the name of the encoding or you say hey this is the model for which I want the encoding to be done and then you call the encode method on it and uh, this is how you then encode and you get these are all the tokens right so these are the tokens when we send something to the LLM they basically want things in tokens right so the you would have seen there is an input token limit there's an output token limit so these are those tokens right so tick token is great got converted into six tokens right so so now what we want to do is with this what i basically in this tutorial like i mentioned what we what i want to help you understand is that when we have a large text right you know so let's just say if i have a large text something like this uh, and this is something that I asked ChatGPT to create that, you know, hey, just create some story. It's some random story, right? So this is a large text. The key point to note here is this is a large text, right? Now, generally what we do is when we have this large text, we, we want to ingest this or we want to send this to uh, Langchain, uh, to OpenAI, there is a token limit we'll have to keep in mind. So the standard procedure is that, hey, you know what? You load, you chunk, and then you ingest, right? So this is the load is done. Let's just say the load is done. We now have this text. The second part is where we start chunking the text, right? And one popular uh, splitter that we have discussed in several videos on Langchain is a uh, recursive text character splitter, right? So, so generally when you have a recursive text character splitter, uh, let me also import tick token uh, meanwhile, uh, what we do is we say, hey, you know what? There is this recursive text character splitter. So I'll say text splitter is equal to recursive text, recursive character text splitter. And we give it what is the chunk size. So let's just say if our chunk size is 1000 and our chunk overlap is 200, or let's just work with 410 for now, right? Um, 450, right? So uh, or let's just make it 10 to avoid reduce the size. So we, when we run this, what happens is we get these texts which are splitted bases the length bases these characters, right? They are like, hey, you know what? So let's just say text underscores. Uh, if we do a text and we print the text, we get all of this back, right? So if I say text zero, uh, we get we get this back. And if I say, hey, give me the len on text zero which basically means how many characters are there, we'll see that we got 360. Our chunk size was 400, so it has reduced it. Like, you know, that is the max chunk size, right? So so when we, when, when we run with this, with the chunk size of 400, we get 360 as the first text, right? But let's say if you don't want to chunk on the 
on the characters and now you want to chunk on the tokens right so the way to do it is that you know we'll first define the encoding just like we did here uh, so encoding is let's just say if i'm doing for gpt 3.5 turbo i'll take the same encoding and then we'll say encoding dot encode and we'll have to pass whatever is the uh, so we we got the encoding we'll not do the encoding dot encode right now what we'll do is because our objective here is that we want to chunk basis token lens, not basis characters, but token lens, right? So let's say if, if uh, this um, uh, this six, right? You know, so I want to chunk basis the token lens. So what we'll do is we'll first define uh, a token length function, right? So we'll say token length. The key point here is that this recursive text character splitter also has something called as a length underscore function. And that is that is what we are going to make use of here, right? You know, we are going to override the default value, and we are going to say, hey, you know what? Use this this as the length function when you are uh, when you are chunking. So we'll say uh, tick token length, and we'll say this. We are going to pass a text which is a string, and we, we want it to return an int, right? So we'll say tokens is equal to encoding dot encode, um, and we'll pass it the text. We'll say disallowed special is uh, blank return uh, len of tokens right so our tick token len function is done this is going to return us a length uh, so it will first take some text it will convert it into tokens and it will return the length of the token now what i want to do is i want to define my uh, recursive recursive uh, uh, recursive splitter and i want to say recursive character text splitter where now i'm again going to say chunk size is 400 but now when we say chunk size is 400 uh this chunk size is largely a function of what is the length right you know it's chunking basis this length right so and chunk overlap is 10 right so um we'll also say we'll also add some separators to it so we'll say separators um or let's just remove separators yeah so so we have a recursive splitter now and if i do a recursive underscore splitter uh, dot split text text and we say these are again text um, so now let's see what we get back right so if we do a text of zero we got a decent size chunk back uh, you look at this. Um, okay, I'll. We don't have that printed. Uh, but now let's just do a len of this, right? So a len of this is one five nine three, whereas our chunk size was four hundred. The key here, like I said, the chunk size is a function of this length function. When we run this by default, the length function is length. Uh, let me show you on the LangChain documentation recursive. Uh, so uh, when we do this, um, no, I need the API documentation. Yeah. So length underscore. Some reason not able to find it here. Okay, I'll find that and come back to you. Yeah, I'll mention that separately. So the key point is that, you know, when you have large text and if you are chunking them basis, the characters, sometimes you cannot make out how many tokens there will be. Right. And you want to efficiently utilize each token, each call to the LLM. I have personally found that if you start chunking basis, the uh, the token length. Right. You know, so if my if my model allows me to uh, make 2000 token calls in one go, I would rather chunk basis 2000 tokens and say, hey, you know what, the text splitter, um, len of text of zero, I'll get 1965, right? So um, interestingly, this time the length is very, very close to what we got here. Let me see what, maybe this, this is not that large, right? So it's always going to be 1965 uh, or no. So it's the chunk sizes are always less than this, uh, but this is, um, oh, sorry, I'm using the old splitter, that's why. I was wondering why is it like you know one eight two four the um, 
but if we if we use the new splitter right which has a len function which has a which makes use of a custom len function you will see um let's just move it to 2000 and this to 200 uh now let's see um uh, if you look at the len i'm getting 6137 characters in that so it makes a lot of sense if my model allows 2000 tokens why should i send only 2000 characters or 4000 characters i can send 6000 characters in that case right you know so uh, so this is the inspiration i hope you learned something new i have found chunking by uh, token size to be very very efficient yeah go ahead and try it out and let me know what you think and there you have it by chunking text based on tokens rather than characters we can better manage input for large language models this is especially true if you if your text is very large right i will strongly say, suggest that you consider this method in my personal opinion this method is very efficient and ensures compliance with token limits as well if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell icon for more coding tips and tutorials thanks for watching and see you next time on generative geek till then keep geeking